The world of recruiting is not just for where you go to college, not just where you work. Recruiting is now happening with players mm -hmm. and where they're going to play in the World Cup. Basketball has a World Cup. News came out that the new San Antonio Spurs number one guy, Victor Wembanyama. Wembanyama. Wembenyama. Wembenyama. Yeah. It's fine. It's, 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 I don't, do you have to pay the fine if no one knows how to say the name? Wemby. I'm pretty sure Amin said it right. Yeah. Et je parle français, but I can't say the Oof. name. Thank you. <laughs> That's for you. That was for the group. So he said he's not going to play the World Cup because his view is that it will interrupt his development, which I'd like to get to you about Amin, where if you have him, if you're the Spurs, mm -hmm. I don't believe he's making that decision on his own. Mm -mm. The Spurs, mm -hmm. like we do with our youngins, mm -hmm. we're going to tell them exactly where we want them to play, mm -hmm. how we want them to play, and including the college players, we tell them what they're allowed to do after we draft them. Most teams don't want their players playing for the national team uh, for a couple of reasons. One is just That like, started with Mark Cuban, did it not? No, Mark Cuban was the first to say it out loud. Okay. But most teams are, would rather their players not play for the national teams because beyond the miles on the odometer, a lot of times, this may not be the case for Team USA, but certainly for many of those European nations, their practice habits and their demands are way greater than what we would be comfortable with for a guy in off season. That's like the World Baseball Classic in baseball. We don't want our pitchers ramping up yep. that quickly in spring. It yep. leads to injuries. It's not a great thing. But there's recruiting that happens because like the World Baseball Classic where the rule is if you want to play for Italy, you have to have eaten fettuccine Alfredo, yeah. and then you can play for Team Italy. They don't have Alfredo in Italy. Uh, that, so that's like they don't have tacos in Mexico yeah. or Kung Pao chicken in China. <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing. Who is this General So anyway? Right? I don't understand. <laughs> I can't find that food Sam, anywhere. No. So we had a situation. <laughs> we had a situation. General Sow or So? I thought it was Sow. I thought it was So. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> I have is. General Sow's chicken. Huh. So. So, I mean, take me through what's going on <laughs> with the former number one pick and the issue that we have now between Italy and the U.S. Yes. Where there's been scorched earth, which could impact a young man's life if he ever wants to go home again. It is an international incident, folks, because unlike Victor Wimbanyama saying, I think I'm just going to sit it out this year, Paolo Banquero has done an about face, whereas previously he said, I would love to play for the Italian national team and play in the Olympics, and then COVID happened, so he didn't get to do that. Now he is committed to playing for Team USA. The problem is, unlike, you know, going to college, declaring, I'm going to go to North Carolina and say maybe a year after, eh, this didn't work out, I want to transfer. Once you commit to a national team for playing on the senior national team, that's your team. And so the Italian Federation president, Gianni Petrucci, is reasonably pissed off about this decision. I didn't find his response reasonable at all. Uh, well, let me read the quote, and you guys can judge. <clears throat> I'm not going to use an accent because... Because no, you shouldn't use an accent. Betrayal is a big word. In sports, these things happen, and personally, I'm used to it. I consider it a joke. It was a legitimate decision, but he could have made a call to communicate that to us. Instead, we learned about his decision from newspapers. In the past few days, he was in Milan, and despite our agreements with his agency, he avoided the meeting with Coach Pozzecco. Pozzecco? Pozzecco. Pacheco. Sick. Mm -hmm. S-I-C. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So like, he's not happy. He's not. But I don't blame him, David, because he shouldn't be happy. He hinged. Don't air it publicly. Oh, why he, not? Why? Is he, why? It can't. It What's he the wants, upside? He wants the player to do it the right way. You, why should you, he not air it publicly? Let me tell you. A, let me tell you the story of Goran Dragic. Right. Goran Dragic was born in Slovenia. His dad is Serbian. Right. Born in Slovenia, grew up in Slovenia. He's Slovenian through and through. He's playing for the Slovenian national team. They're playing at Serbia. And literally the entire crowd, the entire game is just chanting traitor, traitor, traitor at him, right? Slovenia loses the game. Do you know what the front page of the Slovenian newspapers was? Dragic throws game because his dad is Serbian. I say this story to tell you that they are not – like even keeled at all over there when it comes to sports, particularly national team play. They are unhinged, all of them. That's the way, that's their culture of sport. So 
this statement, while I agree with you, if this were if this were the coach or the GM of a team here in the NBA and a guy said, I'm signing with you guys, and then he signs somewhere else, I agree with you. You just say, uh, you know, I thought we had a deal, but, you know, whatever. We wish him the best of luck. You, you take the high road always, just like when you fire a coach. You take the high road. I, I gave the Chicago Bulls a lot of crap a couple of years ago when they fired Tibbs and told us why in a press release. I'm like, no, no. Just say, hey, best of luck. We're moving on. We're moving on. I was very good at those releases. Very quick. (laughs) We're going in a different direction. You had a lot of practice. practice. But this is different. This is different. This is national team stuff. And this is, again, their culture over there is to go scorched earth every single time. I think they were just angry at the U.S. and Steve Kerr. Steve no. Kerr did a major recruiting job. This was about recruiting. I was wondering. No, they were angry uh, at a player who made a commitment yeah. to the country and then bailed on that commitment. So the USA had nothing to do with this. I'm certain the USA did have something to do with it, and that contributes to their frustration. But, you but know? also, David, that's the thing that I think they don't get over there because sometimes they think, oh, this kid is very proud of his heritage. Of course, he wants to play for us. And they don't realize for players in this country, at some age, you're like, yeah, you know, if I get to play the Olympics, I'll play for Italy. Or, or Ghana or whatever, but then you get to a point where like, oh, I'm good enough to play for Team USA. Oh no, I want to play for them. It's not. It's not even really a recruiting pitch that's that strong. Other than you're in basketball, not not, not, in soccer, not right? in other other Just sports basketball. is different. But in basketball, these kids like you know Bam Adebayo could play for Nigeria, but he's like, why would I play for Nigeria when I can play for Team USA and have an Olympic gold medal? Because that's basically it. You're guaranteeing yourself. Hardware when you play for Team USA. I can't picture the head of the Nigerian Basketball Association going against BAM if BAM chose U.S. over Nigeria. If BAM committed, If BAM though, committed verbally. There is no indication, right, a verbal commitment. You commit verbally to be in every day. Yeah. What, what does that wow. mean? Right? Right. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, and I don't make it. that verbal commitment, by the way. <laughs> no, no, but you say, I'll be here, I won't be here. Right. And we just, there's nothing we can do unless you're in violation of a contract. Right. There was no contract in this case. No, there was no contract, but so, again... It's a lot of a lot of action around the decision of a young man with the World Cup, and I feel for him. I feel for the player, and I'm an owner guy. I but feel you for realize the from Italy's standpoint, okay, we have this great player. He's committed to play with us, and now we just lose another player to the United States, right? So you move on. You try to get <laughs> him. To so who? He's to a player who's not nearly he's as good. He's, he's a generational <laughs> talent, though. Like that's a, it, you move on. It's like all right, right another twenty years before the next. You see the difference maker. For them, would, would Italy have been a contender in the World Cup for for to to get to like because again, to medal. Th- not only the medal, but you got to understand when you're playing in these international tournaments, there are points that you get, and this is true. Mike, back me up. This is true with like soccer and everything. It's like those soccer players get a one-time change when you. Fi- but like I'm just saying, the team finish affects where you are in the world rankings, and that affects whether you qualify for other tournaments or you have to play in pre-qualifying events. So it's, there, there's more to it than just did you win or did you medal. There's a, a pressure to perform well because that ensures that you stay at the highest level of competition. So for World Baseball Classic, we do things like that when it started, that it, the higher you finish, it's the more money you get to make your program even better. Yeah, that too. So that's common. Mm-hmm. But what I'm asking Italy, how much money – was at stake, do you think? For if them? you had to guess, because when I saw this this answer, this visceral anger, I assumed it was money related. One million dollars. That's where that's where my head was. I thought they had some inkling that with him on the team, they were in line to get something, because otherwise there'd be no reason. I think I think it was probably a marketing strategy, because one of the things that uh, Petrucci said, he uh, says uh, he fooled what? us. We were planning a great commercial strategy for him. So like you can get you can get a lot of mileage out of a guy like that going to play in Italy and just selling his freaking jerseys. Yeah, I mean like like <laughs> I mean said very eloquently, yeah, but yes, that's, that's right? like there's like, like merchandising, there's there's uh <laughs> there's uh, endorsement deals with sponsorships. There's a lot of stuff going on there when you could say, hey, we have one of the best players in the NBA playing for us. They they milk it, and again, all that money goes to the federation. 
Get well, it in writing. Of course. I mean, like, look. What is your issue? That the guy took the guy's him out upset. publicly? Yes. <laughs> I, I actually don't like the fact you that You want him to call kid, him on his cell and just have a nice, stern conversation with him? A hundred, wouldn't that That's be the more unreal professional way <laughs> if you handled it that way, like person to person, without calling someone out publicly? Well, did he call the coach from Italy to say, hey, I'm not playing? This is or did he a, announce it publicly? We are hearing that he announced it publicly. <laughs> Not ideal. So it's possible that his reaction was to that. But when you are an owner or the head of a federation, you have to be better than the player. How do you feel about public apologies? I find them to be absolutely... Not effective. <laughs> what? Gen- genuine heartfelt. Genuine we heartfelt. Just had a moment, yeah. I thought. Public apologies. I want better connectivity. Where you atone for being wrong, not only to the person but for the masses, so they can all know that you are wrong. There yeah. is one day of atonement for me, <laughs> and that's it. It's called Yum Kipper. I atone for everything. I thought Mike I sure was really being the bigger man there. I'm not no. gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Thank you. Thank you. One time. One time you passed on a short joke that was put on a tee for you. Oh, that's what he was thinking. Short joke. What? No, I went like figuratively being the better man. You said bigger, not better. Yeah, Yeah, but that's metaphorically speaking. The better man. That's your own insecurity, man. I didn't say being the taller man. You said being the bigger man. Stronger man. Mike sure was sitting down. We don't know. Yeah. You've seen. We, We glossed over the fact that he may have crossed a picket line. Yeah, he did. Well, yeah, a, he did I think, announce that. I think he, he fully meant what yeah. he was saying. He changed his every world word of it, right, Jess? Worried, so yeah. my position is this: if someone proves to me that he crossed the WGA picket line is officially a scab, then I will accept the apology. Well, he wrote that apology, he did, did he not? And yeah. it's he a announced it. I, I'm sure it's going to get aggregated by awful announcing any minute now. Yeah. yeah. What Mike's, I can't sure. wait for is for people to see that he did something that could be perceived as work during the writer's strike. Then he's going to have to come on and do a real apology that to was all of his people. That was Another. a real An apology. Additional and I don't think apology. he wrote it. I think that was speaking from the heart. No, that he was wrote it. Total, no. He wrote it. Top no. You think he made that top up? Of the that head. That top was 100% of the head. He was scanning the, the screen just to see your reaction to his Ooh. honest, exactly. humble Everyone. apology. Everyone. He's that was at from the heart. His eyes were going back and forth. He has a thing. Honestly. I watched his eyes. If it were truly an honest apology, though, he would have apologized for Rutherford Falls. Yeah. That would have been a starting point for me. What I'm most excited about is to apologize to him when he's back on tomorrow. Because I'm still going to be here tomorrow. I won't. (laughs) 